group. So welcome everybody, very small group. My name is Courtney Kirk. I am the senior planner in the public space and urban forestry department for the city of Somerville and the project manager for the Central Hill Campus Phase 1 project. Um, since this is a small group, um, I just want to point out the individuals that are here tonight. So we have uh, Councillor Ben Ewan Campen for Ward 3, uh, Director Luisa Oliveira from Public Space and Urban Forestry, uh, in the back, we have uh, Viola Augustine, our GLX liaison from the mobility department, and Justin Schreiber, transportation planner with the mobility department. And uh, these folks from the mobility department, they uh, work on tangential projects to this, um, like the Gilman Square station planning, um, the Gilman Square streetscape, uh, the Central Hill parking study, um, the Spring Hill sewer separation project. So Central Hill phase one is really nestled in um, a lot of active projects in the city of Som Somerville right now. Um, so everything that we're working on, we try very hard to be coordinated with everyone to make all of our projects work seamlessly with each other. Um, so quick show of hands, is anyone here for the very first time as a Central Hill meeting? Great, welcome. Um, so just to talk a little bit about tonight, this is the third and final design meeting for Central Hill phase one. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna have the, the design team talk about the project. Um, and then when they're done presenting, we can open it up for questions. So I just ask that you guys hold your questions until they're done presenting the project because we have a lot um, of work to cover. Um, so I introduced the people that are here there are a number of other city people that are involved in this project that we have internal um, meetings to discuss this project and also advise um, our design team. And our design team from the SMA team, we have Lorraine Finnegan and Laura Munnies. And from Tool Design Group, we have Stephanie Wire and um, Peter Rebuck from SMA. And you are the engineer from SMMA, and I just met you tonight. <laughs> What's your name? Peter. Pe oh, okay, Peter, sorry. My mistake. Um, awesome. So as I said, this is the third uh, community meeting to, to finalize the landscape design. Uh, just to talk a little bit about the community process uh, during the master plan phase, there were additional workshops and specific outreach with the Veterans Commission during Central Hill Phase 1. We also had meetings with the Veterans Commission. Um, we went to the Urban Forestry Committee. Uh, there was targeted outreach at Library Storytime. Uh, Central Hill was spoken about at um, our last psych, fall and spring cycle of ResiStat meetings. So there are lots of opportunities for people to provide input that we've all tried to incorporate in this final um, design. And where we're going next after this is that we received uh, city council approval to um, accept uh, $400,000 in grant money from the state for the playground renovation and $300,000 uh, in community preservation committee money um, that we'll be contributing to the playground and uh, city council approved our construction money. So we are planning to put this out to bid um, late winter so that we can uh, have shovels in the ground spring 2020. Um, so it's coming up very, very fast. Um, we will be wrapping up the entire construction 
for this project by the end or the fall of 2021. So you guys will have a pl new playground and new memorials um, and bring back the Korean and Vietnam memorials uh, pretty quickly, which is very great. So um, seeing that there are some experts in the crowd and some new faces, I, I wanted to have a little trivia question. Um, so what is Somerville's oldest public park? Any ideas? Answer? Yes. The one that was knocked down. The one, that was knocked down. <laughs> the one outside? Yes. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Winner. Yes. So actually, Central Hill Park is Somerville's oldest public park. It was the first land um, that was actually uh, purchased by the city and with the intent that it was for uh, the people and for uh, recreation. So I think that this is an important fact to remember um, because this is really what we're talking about tonight is a park renovation project um, and really bringing back um, the attention that Central Hill Campus and Central Hill Park, uh, we need to bring this open space back to the people. Um, so with that in mind, I am going to hand this over to SMMA and Lorraine Finnegan. Thanks, Courtney. Hi, um, just a reminder, Louisa has pieces of paper and pencils because we are gonna ask you to hold your questions to the end. It's about a 30 minute presentation. I think there's only one new person, so I will be relatively brief moving through some of the history, but we feel it's important to set it's important to set the context of Central Hill and the planning process. So when we started the high school project, which was prior to the Central Hill master plan, we dug back into the history of Central Hill. We found some original maps. We then followed through the history of the high school on the Central Hill site, starting in 1847, moving on to 1852 with the addition of the Latin High School and the public library. We actually found some masonry debris of the Latin as we were demolishing part of the existing high school. In 1895, they added English, which most people know. You come in the front door of that high school. What you might see different is there's no pitched roof on the high school today. We'll get to that, but that's what it used to look like originally. In 1914, additions were added to the main area of the high school and English high. In 1927, they added more additions on. That's what we call A and C wing. We've since demolished C wing, which is right here. In 1956, there was a fire that destroyed the roof of the original high, the 1895 building. And in 1957, when they built that back, they built a low sloped roof or what we'd call a flat roof. So there's been a, a lot of discussion about the preservation of that building moving forward. This is the basement, technically. And here we are today with Central Hill, which is a very busy space today with the city hall, the high school, the public library, the war memorial building. It takes up a large portion of the site, leaving very little space for open space. So when we started the master planning process, there was a discussion about connectivity across the site, connectivity from north to south, the GLX line coming in, how could we make connections with the Gilman Square Station, what would the new high school look like, and how can we free up more open space on the site. So the proposed high school moved east, down towards the, the public library. This is the new high school proposed here today. You'll see quite a bit of construction out there, some steel going up. Phase one starting to get enclosed. Phase two you'll see behind a large white tarp as they keep that heated to get the um, exterior built. And the existing um, war memorial building and what we refer to as the 1895 building. Obviously we're illustrating a pitched roof back on that building. That project is a, another phase of the Central Hill campus, but the discussions that have always been is can that be recreated to bring back the original history of that building. Here's some uh, perspectives of what the new high school will look like. Many of you may remember the War Memorial Building. It doesn't look as pretty as this right now. Um, we have a lot of it torn apart. Uh, a lot of the masonry is in disrepair as part of the high school project that's all being restored. That will be the new theater for the high school. This space right here will be a new space that's shared by the community, by the public. It's called a large group instruction room. It's tiered seating, lecture hall style, tablet arms, 
a great space for the high school students, but will also be available for other uses outside of school hours. And if you move around Memorial, the War Memorial Building, you'll see the main entry. These columns went up this week. Um, if you get a chance to peek through from the site, they're pretty spectacular. It's very tall, slender, very elegant. Really identify the front door of that new building, 21st century moving forward and looking forward. From School Street, it's going to change dramatically. There really is not going to be a back of this building anymore. There's been a lot of emphasis placed on the Medford Street elevation as well as the School Street elevation. Gilman Square T-Stop is right behind here, so everybody's going to see this perspective and this elevation of the building every day as they go to and fro. So a lot of attention has been put on. We're standing in the cafeteria. I was sort of quibbing earlier about, I hate this space. There's no natural light. There's no exposure to views. This is the new dining commons. The students are going to be able to look out over Gilman Square, out into the city. There's an outdoor deck where they can actually go outside and eat on a nice day and really get a little bit more healthy of an environment for the few minutes they get to spend during lunch. Just an example, the back of the existing building took up a large portion of that back of the site. And you'll see in the, in the new building, we have a multi-purpose field at the back. Fields are very important in Somerville. There's a lot of priority and use for fields, a lot of demand on the fields. Um, so it's really important to try and get as much outdoor space, both for physical education for the high school students, but also for the community to use after hours and on weekends. But you can see it really does open up the back of the site. And that's the Gilman Square, Square T station right there. So you'll be able to cross right through from the back of the site to the front of the site in the future. As we started to look at the Central Hill plan, we were looking at the buildings on the site, the different eras they were built, the different contexts, the materiality of those buildings, and looking at everything from the War Memorial to the 1895, which is without its pitched roof, to the uh, uh, Central Library as well as City Hall. As part of the next phase of the Central Hill plan, the 1895 and City Hall will be addressed. So in end, we will be touching everything from School Street to Mel Medford, Walnut, and Highland. So the entire campus will eventually be upgraded. Medford is quite an opportunity. We found these, some of these wonderful old pictures. There's the old library. You used to be able to walk down through the site. The connectivity that used to be there and originally must have been great as people moved back and forth. This was the old train station. You're looking at the back of the 1895 with its pitched roof. And again, to bring that back, thinking the new Gilman Square T-stop will be right here. So looking back at the future and looking forward, a lot of similarities. There's phasing, obviously. We can't build everything at one time with the high school project. So the same way at the Central Hill plan, it'll be phased. Just to give you a sense of the phasing, in 2018, we demolished part of the building known as Wing C. It was built in 1929. We put modulars out on the front lawn to house some of the students so we could keep school moving forward. We started construction of phase one in July of 2018. That's what you see going up today. We started construction of phase two in this summer, or it's already 2020, in the summer of 2019. And then phase three will follow. So next summer, when the kids move out, they'll all start their new year, 20, 2020, in the new school. We'll demolish the remaining portions, leaving the original 1895 building. And that's when the field construction will occur. If I'm moving too fast, let me know. I know there's only one person who hasn't heard this before. So the high school master plan, even though we were doing a high school, we looked at the entire site at the time. How can we best use the site? How is the access around the site going to work for parents, for students, for visitors coming and going from the site? A lot of uh, attention was paid on this connection, which is now made through the site between the 1895 and the new building. And then the high school really had its limits, though. It wasn't going to address the 1895. It wasn't going to address City Hall or the library at that stage. So everything you see in green is what was being addressed by the high school. The master plan started to come into play, and we started to relook at the overall master plan, the overall ideas. But since we were out to bid with the high school, there were some limitations on what we could do and what we couldn't do. But there are certainly opportunities. So we looked at all of those opportunities, whether they were part of the high school or not. Did they need to be revisited? Now we're looking at a central campus instead of just the high school needs. And changes have been implemented into the Central Hill Plan that, because they haven't been constructed yet in the high school, will be able to be made. So we're moving forward with the Central Hill Campus. Opportunities for development along the community path. There's a portion along School Street. Obviously, this large quad associated with the City Hall, the quad in front of the 1895 building, Memorial Hall. 
we refer to this one as the high school quad, so everything's sort of getting moving its way along, and then the library. There's been a lot of discussion over the years about an addition to the library. That conversation occurred all the way through the master plan, making sure that we took into account in some time in the future, possibly not near future, but distant future, they will want to do an addition there. So everything we've done has kept that in mind as we've moved through the process. So we had a bunch of parameters that we needed to work with. Obviously, the high school was there, and a project scope was our starting point. We knew the Gilman Square T station was going in right behind us, and we wanted to work with that and make those connections. The city had undertaken some parking and traffic studies, so a lot of conversation about parking, both on the campus and off the campus, what the parking should be, what it looked like, as well as traffic was discussed. The city had undertaken some building use spaces. What are they going to use the 1895 building for after school vacates? What are the different facilities that might go in there? What are the needs? The recreation of the playground, because we knew we were relocating the playground. And then also the war memorials, at reincorporating them on the site in a bit of a more deliberate way, really looking at how they should be laid out on the site, because they had been placed over time, and just at that time never really thinking about what the campus would be. So we have had multiple feedback um, options. We've had multiple community meetings. As Courtney mentioned, met with the veterans. We've met with other groups to try and get their input on it. Maintaining trees has probably been one of the biggest things we've heard. Um, maintaining parking and then finding a way to create a really respectful um, path of travel through the war memorials. Really understanding how that they should, where they should be on the site and how you should receive them and spend time at them on the site. Other emerging themes that we talked about were safer streets, crossing Highland, um, as we all know is, you know, take it into your own hands at some times, um, and then students and access through the site, accessibility, bicycles, bicycle safety, where the bikes should be on the site, and enhancing the green space, creating this back to more of an open space scenario. So this is where we ended up. This is our preferred campus plan. I'm not going to go into the detail of this because Laura and Stephanie will take us through what the details are. But it really analyzed creating, keeping the high school drop-off loop that we had, moving the playground over in front of the library and maintaining a nice lawn, changing the grade there so we could have a better area of the lawn. Creating a real central point, a midpoint basically, in front of the war memorial. It really has a presence, it has a frontage on Highland but it doesn't feel that way today and hasn't felt that way, so really re-emphasizing that, creating that as a point for your um, eye to move to as well as enter on the site from Highland. And then in the future, at 1895 and City Hall, there was a concept for a real plaza there that you could hold events, you wouldn't be standing on the grass, that you'd have some more hard surfaces, whether it's permeable pavers or pavers of some kind, but that there'd be uh, areas for bigger, larger, and more prominent events there in front of City Hall in 1895. But we can't do it all at once. So it is phased. So phase one of the Central Hill project includes the area in front of the library, the area in front of the high school, and the area in front of City Hall, of the War Memorial Building, excuse me, as well as doing a mid-block crossing, a crossing here at the school entrance, and addressing some issues that are with Walnut and Medford and Medford and Highland. So uh, Walnut and Highland. Sorry. So the next phase will encompass 1895 and City Hall. So that is a future phase that will be put out to bid. There'll be future meetings on that. There'll be design on that. That is not, there's a concept at this point, but that's it. So we have construction documents complete for this phase of the project. And as Courtney said, we're going out to bid late January and we'll hopefully break ground in June on this portion of it. So I will let Laura take you through the design. Okay, so I'm going to give you a review of uh, phase one of the Central Hill design. Here is the overall plan. Um, you can see the outline in red is the limit of our scope, and the outline in yellow are the two intersections regarding Walnut Street at Highland and Medford, and um, Stephanie will review that in more detail um, coming up. As Lorraine mentioned, the um, campus plan uh, determined with the Veterans Commission and the community uh, members that we wanted to keep 
the war memorials on campus and to put them in a, um, re replace them in a meaningful way in a chronological order uh, central to the green space. So the plan at the top represents uh, that, that concept from the campus planning uh, effort and the images along the bottom are all of the memorials that were either already on campus or the uh, World War I memorial which will be coming up from Union Square to join the others. This is a closer look at the space in front of the um, high school quad. So you can see in the key plan, it's that middle space there. Um, this is where two of the memorials, the Viet uh, Korean War Memorial and the Vietnam War Memorial will be placed uh, in the memorial walk that we're developing. And you can see um, existing images of the Korean War Memorial uh, when it was directly in front of the War Memorial building. And below is an artist rendering uh, to give you a sense of what that space is gonna feel like. The rendering isn't finished with all the details, but it should give you a good sense of what that space will feel like as you're walking along the path uh, of the memorial walk. So again, that Korean uh, War Memorial will be relocated here um, at the number one. And the Vietnam <clears throat> War Memorial will be located here in the center. So chronologically, um, you're moving from west to east. And in the future phase, the other memorials will be placed in the other quadrant in front of 1895 and City Hall. So at, in the future phase, when those are placed, the beginning of the memorial walk chronologically will begin at City Hall, moving toward the library. Again, here's an, ex or an image of the existing Vietnam War Memorial. Uh, it will be placed in the center of the space, and there are five memorial benches that used to accompany the memorial when it was located at Union Square that we will restore and bring back to place with the memorial. Um, it's difficult to see here, but this is a picture of a picture <laughs> of, what, of its original configuration at Union Square. And we are doing, um, trying to reestablish it in its uh, original configuration. Again, below is an artist rendering of how that space might feel. Uh, again, the benches aren't there, but they will be there. Um, but you can see the shaded path into which you can go into each of these spaces and have um, respectful visitation with the memorials. Moving back to in front of the War Memorial Building, we have Gold Star Plaza. Um, the Gold Star Plaza, or, or the Gold Star um, service members of Somerville are currently listed in the honor roll space uh, near City Hall. Um, and this, it was determined between the campus planning um, project and this project that um, they wanted to take, the city and the Veterans Commission wanted to take the Gold Star um, service names and create a plaza dedicated to them um, at the space in front of the War Memorial Building. So that's the left quadrant of the uh, phase one of the design. The honor, current honor roll will, will remain in place um, until the um, re-envisioned honor roll, um, the, the remainder of the honor roll will be incorporated into the second phase of the Central Hill design. So uh, the intention of this space is to hold um, events and ceremonies and memorials and things like that. Uh, within the space, you can walk in from Highland into a lower space. Um, there are, are opportunity for seating around there. There is an accessible route up both sides to the up, or into the mid-level plaza and into the upper-level plaza. Um, there will be two walls flanking the upper level, which will have, here's a, an elevation of what that will look like. On one side will be the Gold Star Plaza with the um, seals of each branch of service. And on the right side will be all the names that are currently listed um, at the honor roll for the Gold Star service members. Again, here is an artist rendering um, to give you a sense of what that space will feel like. At the upper level, there will be a gold star uh, with six flagpoles, one for each branch of service and the, uh, flat, or the um, United States flag. 
to give you a closer look, um, obviously you can't read all the names, but this just gives you a little bit better look of how those walls will look when they're complete. They will be uh, clad with a dark stone and the uh, words will be engraved with a gold, gold lettering. Uh, the seals will be bronze plaques that are um, set into the wall. Again, as I mentioned, these first couple of memorials and the Gold Star Plaza uh, set up the first part of the memorial walk. Um, the arrow here indicates that, again, the other memorials in the next phase will be um, incorporated into the other side of campus. Uh, this is an overview of the accessibility across campus. The blue lines represent all the accessible, accessible routes on this portion of campus. Uh, as Lorraine mentioned, um, the master plan, the going back to the high school and continuing with the Central Hill plan, um, aims to reconnect Medford Street, in this case, between the high school and the library with a zigzag path to get the connectivity back through campus this way. There are also many routes along and around to and through campus um, from various points of, um, through the campus. We have two accessible spots within the layout of the high school drop-off loop that was um, incorporated as part of the high school project. And additionally, the Central Hill project added a passenger loading zone near the library for additional um, <clears throat> opportunities for patrons to get in and out of the library. To find your way around campus, uh, we have continued the development of the wayfinding um, family that was started by the high school project. So a family of signage that includes building markers, roadside pylons, uh, pedestrian maps and directories, and the informational placards that'll be at each of the uh, memorials. And you can see here is where they will be located uh, on campus. There is a building marker for the high school that was part of the high school scope uh, located at the high school entrance. Uh, the Central Hill will add another one for the library at the corner of Walnut and Highland. There are three vehicular directories for the driveway entrances on the side of campus. So there's one here, one here at the drive, each of the driveway loops, and one off of Medford that goes to the uh, service area of the high school. And each of those, <clears throat> excuse me, vehicular pylons tells you what programs you're part of the campus that you're accessing. Additionally, the spots in blue in front of the library near the high school where you can come up from the back side uh, or from Medford Street up to the top of campus and one in front of War Memorial will be pedestrian directories. So as you make your way onto campus, stop and look at the map, orient yourself and make your way to your destination. And finally, the uh, informational placards at each of the uh, memorial and plaza spaces. This is just a quick look at what those look, um, signs look like. This is the library uh, building marker and it was um, designed based off of the one that was previously done for the high school to maintain some consistency in what the signage will look like across campus. Similarly, uh, the high, this is the vehicular pylon directing you to various destinations uh, by car. The pedestrian directory and map um, on each, will, each of these will have a map of campus and listing out all the programs and their locations so that you can get yourself uh, to your destination. And the um, memorial information signs. These are mock-ups of what the information on those memorial signs will look like. It'll have a brief description about each memorial to tell you a little bit about the history, the designer, et cetera. 
at the bottom, there will be a QR code and a website to direct you for trans uh, the various language translations. Moving on to the playground in the library. Um, located on the far right side of our scope, our campus here in front of the library. Um, to the left is the existing library here, or I'm sorry, the existing playground in the blue. Um, it was 0.21 acres of space. Uh, with the grant, we are replacing, not only replacing in kind, but the proposed uh, playground and parkland that will be designated in perpetuity will be uh, 0.25 acres. That's here, <clears throat> excuse me, in front of the library and just adjacent to the side of the library. Here were just a couple of images of the existing play equipment that is now gone. This is a look at the uh, future playground. Future playground. Proposed. Um, across the space, there's six to seven feet of drop, so we have some slopes incorporated. We are into the space. We are incorporating the existing trees. Um, a lot of fun challenges designing this playground. There are entrances from both Highland into the lower level and from the library entrance into the upper level of the playground. Additionally, the green space to the right side. Um, as Lorraine mentioned, we're doing a little bit of regrading to flatten it out just a little bit and make it more usable for events on campus, such as movie nights, um, other maybe book fairs, such things, passive and active recreation. Uh, there are there's some plaza space directly in front of the library uh, with some permanent seating uh, for patrons to enjoy as well as a socializing, teen socializing space to the west side of the library, which will have some multi-level seating, as well as some uh, permanent hangout type bench and table seating. Um, this is multi-level, but accessible at each level as well. Additionally, uh, there are, is an accessible route through the playground around the perimeter of this side. Um, there is a small mid-level that has an interior accessible route inside the playground. And from Highland to the library, there is an accessible route from either direction. As you, if you're traveling from Highland and Walnut, uh, we are providing a handrail to uh, help those residents with mobility issues get safely to the library. Uh, taking a quick look at some of the play structures and other design opportunities within the playground. Uh, from the campus planning study, the community voiced a desire to see a nature-inspired playground. And while um, we can't include everything as natural materials. We did include it where we could, and we took inspirations from nature to um, come up with this playground idea. So I'll start with the surfacing scheme. You'll see blue and brown and green. And the idea is that there's a stream that's running through the play space. Might look something like this, a stream with a bank and some grass. So we're looking at blues and greens and browns for the play surfacing. On the upper level, there is a five to 12 year old structure. Um, it has a net crossing, as if you're on an adventure and that net crossing goes right over the stream. And then coming down around the slope, imagine that you're with climbing grips, similar to Chucky e. Harris Park climbing grips on the slope, climbing up through the waterfall and the rocks. Additionally, on the upper level, we have two sets of swings. We have toddler swings and a nest swing for multiple children to um, play on. Moving down and around, uh, we have misting, two misting poles, one at the lower level and one at the upper level to provide some cooling during the hot summers. 
However, this won't create puddles and it won't get anyone soaking wet, but it will give a nice cooling feeling. Oops. We have a couple of parent socializing areas. Again, one at the upper level and one at the lower level to provide parents an opportunity to sit and talk to each other and uh, watch their children play. Um, and then at this mid-level, there's it's a quiet little nook for a cozy spinner for children who might not want to be in the hustle and bustle of the main play area. They're protected. There's nothing around them on the backside. It's fence. There's a fence there, and they can look out across the play space at the other uh, activity going on. Here's there's also a small. Um, double embankment slide for toddlers. It's about three feet or so. So um, it gives two children the opportunity to slide down together or a child and a caregiver. There's a larger slope here in the center of the space with a larger embankment slide for the older children to play on. Uh, additionally, there's similar to the mountaineering rope at Chucky e. Harris and the half balls over at the Winter Hill School. Um, again, imagining that you're climbing up through a rocky waterscape. Um, on the lower level, there is a two to five year old play structure with a little bridge mimic, mimicking a boardwalk crossing. And outside the play fence, there is a space that is really more part of the library entrance. Um, it will have a story walk incorporated into it. So within the boards, there will be, the library will come out from time to time and do a different story and children and parents and caregivers can go along and read the story. There will be, uh, there will be a couple of child's tables with seats in the space as well as an all ages spinner um, seat for everyone to engage. Moving on to the planting goals and strategies for the phase one design. Um, for the trees, we want to expand the city tree canopy, incorporate the existing trees into the design, select large and long living species, uh, incorporate some evergreen species, and um, with an emphasis on native, I believe all of our species are native or cultivars of native species. Um, with the understory planting, we have some formal planting beds around the memorials, the playground, and the library entrance. We have um, rain gardens, uh, the stormwater infrastructure at curb extensions and mid-block crossings. And we also incorporated a couple additional vegetated um, swales at near the playground and along uh, Walnut Street on the west side. Just to remind everyone, this is the existing tree diagram. Um, so this would be existing as in post high school construction. Um, so the trees in the light green represent uh, existing trees that were placed by the high school project. The darker green trees around the perimeter are the existing street trees and the trees within our scope are the existing trees that remain for phase one of Central Hill uh, design. Our project will remove two trees. One is designated by the city to be removed due to recent storm damage here in front of the library. The second tree is in front of the War Memorial Building. Um, is necessary to take that one out to provide access into the plaza space. Uh, looking back at a tree inventory done by the high school, it was a tree in poor health anyway, so um, hopefully we can do well by replacing the two trees with 75 new trees for a net total of 73 new trees within our, our limit of work. Uh, we've done worked really hard to create a diverse palette um, of trees so that we can avoid having future issues with pests and disease. Um, 
at the Gold Star Plaza, we have, I think, I forgot, 10 or 11 species. Balsam fir, sugar maple, service berry, red bud, hawthorn, tulip tree, magnolia, pitch pine, swamp white oak, bur oak, crimson spire oak, and elm. Um, in addition, uh, the formal plantings within the plaza space, and we have the uh, rain gardens at the curb extension and uh, mid curb extension and mid block crossings. The formal plantings in this space all have, or not all, but many of them have yellow and gold characteristics to highlight the Gold Star Plaza. At the Memorial Walk, uh, we have balsam fir, red maple, service berry, uh, red bud, dogwood, tulip tree, magnolia, black gum, London plane tree, swamp white oak, bur oak, pen oak, red oak, and elm. There are two spaces at one at each of the memorials for seasonal plantings by either the Veterans Commission or other groups that are, have interest to come in and celebrate the memorials throughout the year. And finally at the library, we have red maple, sugar maple, service berry, river birch, hornbeam, shagbark hickory, dogwood, honey locust, sweet gum, tulip tree, magnolia, black gum, and London plane tree. Uh, additionally, the um, spaces in yellow are planting beds designated for the garden club to come back and reestablish their gardens that will have to be temporarily removed uh, during construction. The high school um, established some sustainability efforts as um, part of the project that included green roofs, porous pavement, infiltration systems, and rainwater harvesting. Uh, the Central Hill project is taking those efforts and doing what we can to extend them a little further, adding an additional porous pavement and uh, some bioretention in the rain gardens. The area in the light beige is porous paving uh, at the driveway established by the high school project. The darker spaces in front of, at the Gold Star Plaza, the memorials, and in front of the library are areas of additional uh, porous paving that we are incorporating, as well as the blue spaces, the rain gardens at the curb extensions, the small rain garden at the playground, and the larger rain garden at Walnut Street. Um, with these efforts, uh, we will decrease site runoff volume for the 100-year storm by at least another 5%, above and beyond what the high school project was doing. And a closer look at the streetscape sustainability efforts. Uh, the rain gardens will incorporate um, at the curb extensions. This is kind of what they will look like. Um, they will take water in from both the site and the street, and they will infiltrate it back into the ground over a period of 24 to 48 hours. And they will be planted with a number of grasses and pollinator species uh, throughout the site. Additionally, along Highland, we are trying to infill the areas where the trees have either died or uh, have to be removed uh, with street trees, and updating the uh, street lighting with the new city standard that's more energy efficient. So to talk a little bit more about mid-block crossings and intersections, uh, Stephanie. Thank you. Great. Hi, again, I'm Stephanie Wire from Tool Design. And as part of the master planning process, um, we did a big analysis of all of the different ways that people get to Central Hill, walking, biking, driving, and transit. And we looked at different topics from site access and traffic calming, the different grade challenges that our people are dealing with getting up the hill, um, community path and how that would interact, and um, future, tra future traffic patterns and bus stops. And then we set priorities for um, what to address first, um, 
partly coming from what we heard from the community and you know people really emphasize the the crossings here and how dangerous and uncomfortable certain intersections felt so what's made it in for phase one um, also fitting with the the other things that Laura just presented to you are two mid-block crossings by Gold Star Plaza, by the school entrance playground, and then the two intersections, Medford and Walnut, and Highland and Walnut, and the reason you're seeing those labeled as tactical design here, those will be temporary solutions for now, um, as there is a project coming up with the Sewer Hill, uh, Spring Hill Sewer Separation Project design that will happen this year, and then sewer work to happen in 2021, and then eventually more streetscape um, construction in 2022. And so that project will affect curbs, repaving. Um, so while we are looking for the mid-block crossings to do some actual built curb extensions for the intersections, we're focusing on just tactical solutions for now, which are essentially paint and, and flex posts, and I'll show you a little bit more what that's going to look like. But these mid-block crossings, um, you know, Laura was already pointing out that you have rain garden stormwater planting within. Really what the mid-block crossings are doing with these curb extensions um, is to narrow the crossing distance for pedestrians, get drivers to slow down as they approach these crossings and to make pedestrians more visible um, and to really prioritize these crossings um, for pedestrians. We also, for the Gold Star Plaza crossing, um, proposed a rectangular rapid flashing beacon so somebody will push a button and they will get a flashing light to come up and this will particularly help with visibility at night. Both, both crossings have street lights at them, but this will really provide some good advanced warning um, to drivers as people are crossing the street there. So then our intersections, um, what you're seeing is the, the paint striping and then flex posts placed. This is Highland Avenue and Walnut. Right now, these are nice wide intersections and these proposed striping patterns will allow for the different kinds of vehicles that move through these intersections to continue to do so. But meanwhile, they'll tighten up curbs so that when people are taking turns and also people who are parking, um, particularly down on the south side where people park very close to the crosswalk and kind of block the view, um, that we get those drivers to pull away from the curb ramps um, and provide more of that space back to pedestrians, help make pedestrians more visible at those crossings. You're not seeing paint on the, the southwest corner and northeast corner because there are bus stops there. So we can't block the flow of bus traffic. Um, Medford and Walnut Street, it's the, the same thing. Um, we worked with different traffic patterns and really are just pulling these cars back away from these curbs and giving more narrow crossing space for pedestrians, um, which needs to be reanalyzed as part of the Sewer Hill, um, or Spring Hill Sewer Project in the future. Thank you. So just to give a sense of construction, we are sequencing into three phases. Phase one is going to be the quad in front of the high school, and the reason for that is we need accessible routes to the high school in order to gain occupancy to have school there starting in September. So that is a priority number one. We are then, we'll then move to the Gold Star Plaza. Currently the construction trailers are there, but that is going to work um, immediately following the quad in front of the high school. Meanwhile, we will be starting the playground in June of this year. So the playground in front of the, um, in front of the library will commence, but the rest of the work around that will follow. So it is likely because of seasoning and you know we only do plantings in the spring and the fall, that while we can do the concrete sidewalks and the fencing, some of those plantings may move into the early part of 2021 for the third portion. So the overall project for the high school finishes in the summer of 2021. 
the Gilman Square tea stop opens in the summer of 2021, and we should be finished with the phase one Central Hill, all three pieces by the summer of 2021. So I think you'll see a lot of change across the hill at that time. Um, as I mentioned, construction is beginning begin in the spring, and we anticipate it will go out by the time you do punch listing and close everything out and all acceptance. It'll be the fall of 2021. Um, and for our purposes, we're ready to go to bid. We're pulling our packages together. We're going to be advertising for bids on the street for both the playground. We're working with the high school contractor because there's some scope in the high school that we need to maneuver and modify to match these designs. The city will then award, and we hope to be breaking ground in about April of this year. So thank you very much for your patience letting us get through that. I have seen some people writing notes. Courtney, do you want to moderate the questions, or how do you want to do that? Anyone? I'm just going to bring the mic to you since we're small. I have a really long list. Uh, how much do you want? <laughs> uh, first of all, I love the rain gardens. I, that kind of came out of nowhere um, for me, but really pretty. Are tulip trees native? And I didn't know they were native this far north. The USDA definition of native, it is a native tree. Cool. They're pretty. I like them. Um, I also noticed that trees were added between the high school and the library, and I know that I had previously commented on how um, some of the landscaping has limited the ability to continue to sled on the campus, and I'm concerned that the placement of those trees might make it dangerous to sled. So if people do take an opportunity to use that hill for sledding, they could hurt themselves on the trees. Yeah. I know that's not the optimal place for sledding, um, but it is the legacy place for sledding since that's what we've been doing. So in the high school um, design, there's a series of switchback ramps here now um, at the sledding hill to provide access. Um, and during the campus planning, project we did talk about that some and I I know it's hasn't been forgotten um, it's just a matter of hopefully finding a place overall on campus to reincorporate sledding so I think when construction sort of finalizes, uh, I think any sledding enthusiasts will probably find a number of um, interesting slopes uh, that would be worthwhile to explore. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I think this is one of those things like if we designed a sledding hill, then um, you know, there's some joy in, in finding lots of nooks and crannies around the campus. I, I guess I'm less worried about the hill and more about the trees, not that I'm happy about the trees, <laughs> but just where they end up, because because I I would love to find all those nooks and not have them. Um, I'm going to, we'll, circ we'll circle back to you. I'm Laura, and I have two questions about with respect to students. One is about crosswalks. So I'm curious, first, why there's no crosswalk that goes directly to the entrance of the high school. It seems a little circuitous, and I'm sure there's a reason. And then the second one is on School Street. Um, driving in the morning, there's a lot of kids that come from the side. I apologize, I don't know the name, but north of Highland, there's a small side road, and a lot of kids cross right north of um, City Hall, and it's super dangerous, and I don't know if that was ever considered for a crosswalk. And then separate but related, I'm curious how you integrated the thoughts around um, kind of green space for the high schoolers to hang out. It doesn't, um, you know, I know when we see it in person, I'll probably feel very different, but it feels like a lot of very good energy got put to war memorials, and I have nothing, no problem with that, but 
I'm curious where that sort of outdoor space for our students to lounge and hang out. Um, and in particular, I was surprised that there's sort of a green space all the way on the right of the library, but then the playground is in between the high school and the library, green space. So, so th these are all questions about students' um, green space access and then crossings to be safe and access to the school. Thank you. This is the front door of the high school. The existing grades up the driveway are not accessible. So we can't change the grade of Highland. We were limited what we could do with the elevation up here, which is why these are the accessible routes to the front door. There is a sidewalk adjacent to the road, but it is not an accessible, it does not meet ADA and MAAB. But we're still showing it there. But this is, this is the front door of the high school and we're trying to find as many accessible routes as we can. At mid block, yes. Yeah, because otherwise it's drawing people to that intersection. No, that's really helpful. Okay. There is the outdoor dining for students. We have a courtyard inside the building for students. And this is for the high school. This field is for the high school. So there'll be, uh, if you thought about what they had for green space before, it was nothing. So it's a, it's a playing field, not necessarily. It's, it's, it's not green space. It is a field. Plastic field. It is a synthetic turf field. And as part of the master plan, because there's a significant grade change between City Hall and the field, there, one of the concepts of the master plan is to have a weaving ramp system with benches. And this is, again, another area where the high schoolers can hang out. There's a lot of plaza in here now that didn't occur before. We have what's called a sunken garden, because you go down about three feet in here with tiered areas and benches for the students. We have a bench all along the front here for students that they can sit and hang out. We know they're gonna hang out all along here. Medford Street has a parkour course designed in all along the back. We know they're gonna find their ways into these nooks and crannies. And this is an area that is still being analyzed because there's an elevator potentially coming in here, but there's a green space that will now exist for more hangout outside that school. Well, that's helpful because we didn't get to talk about it. Sure. So thank you for and I think you were talking, were you talking about this street here? Yeah. Oh, Montrose and, so and Montrose, Madison. So like when you come out of Montrose, there's a lot of kids that cross right there. Right yep. North of City Hall. So there is a crosswalk here. And even as part of, as part of the, the master plan, we looked at that again with curb extensions and making that because there's a new access road right in at the back of 1895. So we foresee a lot of people coming over there. Sorry. One more changing. Oh, yeah. So that is, this is actually going to be part of that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Was that everything? Yeah, that's okay. Oh, you highlighted all the things that I was missing. Thank you. Tori. Doesn't matter. Hi, my name is Tori Antonino. Um, Thank you guys. It looks like you really took a lot of feedback and um, this is really exciting. So um, I'm an ecological landscaper, so I'm really, really pleased that you took that gauntlet and ran with it. Um, so, so thank you. Um, a few concerns that I still have um, that I've brought up and maybe we can still address it is um, the lawn. Um, I was hoping that we'd be able to incorporate some um, alternative lawn areas, um, perhaps especially amongst the trees, and alternative lawns um, like uh, sedges. So you have Pennsylvania sedge or um, different, like uh, Deschampsia, which is a wonderful grass. And um, I think currently the mix is a, a fescue clover blend, which, which is in the right direction. But um, these sedge lawns, you don't have to mow them, you know, you can mow them like once or twice a year. So maybe in the areas underneath the trees, closer to the trees, we can incorporate that. Um, and then of course, they'll provide places for um, insects and crickets, because uh, one thing I think we forget about, we, we just think trees, we don't think about sort of um, the meadow and grass areas that, that crickets and other insects need um, a place to be. So. Um, so that was one thought, and I have a whole list of the different carexes and dyschampsia, if you'd like it. Um, 
And about the trees, anytime we have an opportunity to plant an oak, we really should because it is the highest, um, it hosts over 500 species of, of Lepidoptera, which are butterflies and moths. So I was looking at the two London plane trees and I know they have this attractive bark and sort of this majesty. It is a cultivar and if we could substitute a couple of those out and put in the swamp white oaks, which are really good and hardy city trees, I, I that gets my vote. Um, but otherwise, it's a really great selection. Um, is that the, on Medford Street, is that a slope? Is that a slope area or is it a flat area? The On the back side of the high school. The tr so um, just, a, again, I could, talk to you after, but um, Staghorn Sumac is a wonderful um, slope stabilizer. It's, it's, there was a grove behind the high school. I tried to rescue it. It does not transfer well. I have figured out how to do it, but um, it would be great to have some of those in there. So happy um, that the parkour is going in because I was really worried that this is a building for the high school students, but we kind of, I felt like, oh great, we have a, a playground, but where are the kids, where are the, you know, a, adult, not adult kids, where are the teenagers, you know, gonna hang out? Where are they gonna play? And adults, so I, I was wondering, you know, um, in addition to the parkour, are there any like, ex exercise equipments um, for the adults? Um, you know, because it's a, uh, I just don't want, I want the kids, the teenage kids to be really thought of as well, and you have been, so. Thank you, Tori. Uh, just, I'm just going to uh, mention that uh, this project we did uh, present the planting to the Urban Forestry Committee, and we received uh, really wonderful feedback from them, which uh, we've incorporated a number of their ideas um, with this project and um, overwhelmingly the community has um, really asked us to preserve um, the lawn for activities like movie nights um, or like walking your dog, um, running, just free running. Um, and I, the species of grass that we're um, ultimately going to plant supports those sorts of activities um, where some of the uh, naturalized grasses are more clumping form and can, you know, trip people or very, make the lawn very uncomfortable to lay on. Um, so in response to um, some of your comments, and I think the team has done a wonderful job in terms of um, having a lot of diversity, um, and I'm really, really excited about the rain garden on along Walnut Street. Um, I think the species selection is uh, gonna be really dynamic in terms of uh, our insect population, which I think is a wonderful opportunity to connect with the library and have this um, beautiful learning moment. Um, in terms of the parkour, since that's part of the high school, I don't know, Lorraine, if you wanna say anything. It seems like it's a all ages kind of activity. Yeah, they are um, pipes, bollards, walls. There's no no moving equipment, so it's it's a traditional parkour. We worked with um, uh, I forgot the gentleman's name. He's from Somerville. Blake. Sorry, hi. There you are. <laughs> so um, probably better answer it than I can. But there's no true adult physical equipment outside. There's a fantastic fitness area inside the high school with a state-of-the-art fitness center um, that the high school students all have access to all day long, even before and after school, but nothing outside because maintenance of that is a little problematic. I'm going to come over to Councillor Ewan Campen. Uh, so thank you all. I, I'm very excited about this. I think it's totally impressive and I really appreciate the amount of thought that's gone into it and the, the ability to answer these questions is an example. I've already voted for it also as one example of what a good idea I think it is. So the, the questions I have, one I promised Michelle before she had to go, there is a fence around the playground, right? Fully enclosed. I thought so, just wanted to get that, make sure. So the, 
this does not really have to do with the phase one area, but the two questions that are very much on the top of mind of people that I hear about, not tonight, but constantly, have to do with accessibility from Gilman Square T station up to the high school. I think, you know, you can't tell on this, but it's an incredible grade and it's basically impossible for anyone in a wheelchair to get from the train station to City Hall, which is a huge problem that I know everyone's aware of, but I'm just hoping to kind of get the latest and greatest thinking on that. And the other, of course, has to do with parking. I know Justin's here. We, we've worked on this many times, but this is, I, I can't tell you how many people I've heard this from, and I just, I always like to get whatever the latest thinking on this is. I don't know who wants to take these. I can address the accessibility. So you're not joking when you say the grade changes. So just for people's information, the community path is at elevation 50. The high school plaza is at elevation 81. The city hall plaza is at elevation 101. So it's a significant change. As part of the high school project, we applied and received a variance to allow an accessible route through MAAB from the high school plaza down the southern driveway onto the community path, and the community path is accessible down to the station. There's a head house for the station here at the um, west side, and another head house right here at the connection. As part of a current project with GLX and the city, we're entertaining and examining adding an elevator at this location. There is a stairs up here, so once you're done working on your parkour and your legs can't take it anymore, you can come up the 20 something feet on the stairs, get more and more exercise. But there is, we are currently looking at what it means to add an elevator. The 1895 building, the wall design that the high school project has done is incorporating a, a box out for the future elevator here. So that will get you from elevation 80 up to 101. So you will, there will be two, potentially two elevators. This is a definitive, that one is still in conversation with GLX. That's an accessible route. To an elevator. To an elevator up to the front of the plaza. And then all of these paths are accessible, except obviously the ones parallel to the roads, because the road pitch is steep. So you can transfer anywhere from Highland Ave through any of these diagonal routes into the campus. Part of the design for the 1895 and City Hall is obviously to eliminate the ramp at the side of City Hall and bring a more formal entrance an accessible entrance so everyone can go in that formal entry. Um, the, there's an elevator along, so if you come on the, on the train, you can get out at this end, as I mentioned, and come up. School Street is School Street, and we are not changing that. It goes, at some points, it's 10%, at other locations, it's almost 11%. So that is existing topography that we won't be changing. But within the site, it is accessible all the way down the Southern Drive, accessible across onto the community path, and accessible all the way down to this area here. So you have choices. And do, do we have, I don't, I'm not trying to pin you down, but do we have a sense of when that second elevator decision will be made? Uh, so that's what I was gonna clarify. Um, so when the high school opens um, and the green line opens, um, we have a concept design for the elevator at the community path up to the high school. Um, and I'm unsure in terms of the high school building project and capital projects, like how quickly they, that might be advancing to sync up with those projects. Um, but the second elevator, that will have to be designed as part of the 1895 and City Hall project, which right now um, we, the, the city, we have to hire an owner's project manager first before we start to think about design or hiring a design team. So we're currently um, in the interview process for the OPM and the OPM will then be advising us on how we can, you know, phase things to quickly either put in an elevator or um, like really help advise um, the city to be effectively working um, towards a design for 1895 City Hall and the second phase of Central Hill Campus. So that elevator that's shown behind the 1895, that will be somewhere around when the high school is. That, that's no. Okay. That's that will be 
open with the 1895 project. Okay. That one might be phased, I see. Yes, yeah. So, sorry, just so I understand. When the GLX station opens, people will be able to get to the high school entrance on that accessible path, or potentially an elevator. Correct. And then how do they get to the city hall? So they would use School Street. Yes. Which is accessible. Medford itself is, is not, it's long. But the community path is accessible, then you'd be on Medford, and then you can use the accessible routes on the site. It's longer to go that way. So you're saying the slope is, is adequate to go from Medford Street up to the high school? Once you get back on the property of the high school, Medford Street itself, there's portions of it that are not accessible. But again, it's an existing topography, and they're not going to change that. Community path is accessible all the way to Medford Street, and then we have an accessible route onto the site from Medford Street. So it's the two points in between. Which is a fairly long distance. It's a long way. I mean, I, I know I'm not telling you folks stuff that you don't know, but yeah. if you talk to the Disability Commission in Somerville, this is the biggest problem with the GLX project. Yeah. And it's very ironic that those people cannot get to City Hall to make that point from <laughs> the station. It's incredibly frustrating. Okay. I know you know this, but it's really unacceptable for us to be able to go back to constituents who have mobility issues and say, we know School Street's too steep, but that's the only option except going all the way around. Any, uh, Justin, do you wanna respond to parking? So um, as a part of the Central Hill plan and, and planning for the high school, the city undertook two parking studies. Um, the first one had a couple shortcomings that were, repeated, that were rectified when they went to do the second one. And the conclusions of those studies are essentially that the on-street system can handle the parking that was lost as a result of the master plan. There are approximately, I believe, 96 spaces that used to exist on the campus that no longer exist. And um, our focus now, you asked for what was the latest and greatest, is sort of managing what we have and um, implementing some TDM efforts for the people that work at the library, at City Hall, and at the Somerville High School. So our goal there is to essentially reduce the number of people that, that drive to campus. What's a TDM? What's a TDM? Uh, transportation demand management. Right. Did you say 96 spaces? 96 or 98, I, I'm trying to remember exactly. Um, there was the spaces close to the library, the school street lot. Um, so is there any parking on this campus anymore? Is there, is there, there is, yes. There's parking I think there's another slide. on the concourse. The net change. Yeah. What's the current? The current total? Before, before any, yes. before the high school? Before I think the it's, high school was 245. Yeah. After the high school is 85, and then the master plan will be 50. Right. And then the master plan? No, 50 total. 50 total. The city hall concourse, the part that's not being touched at this time. Uh, 
the study looked at trying to allocate all the spaces that were being removed as a part of the Central Hill Phase One plan to spaces on the street um, by studying the occupancy during the day, during the morning. That was the conclusion, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, we, we've had whole meetings on this, so there's definitely some complexity there. There's peak events, like when there's parents' night here at the high school, when the system is overwhelmed, exceeds 100%. Um, we're talking about like a typical day, and days when there's street sweeping, things like that. It takes into account observed conditions. Observed conditions right. when it hasn't happened yet. I mean, there, there is a high school there today. I, I, you're, the intensity of the site, is that what you're referring to? I mean, we've enhanced yeah. the, the high school immensely and the size and the capabilities of it and such, and to make it center space or, or civic space, um, as it was discussed before. So yeah. that obviously hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that those studies did not take that into account. I can tell you that. But all of the people who are currently employed on the high school project are parking on the streets right now. Because I know my street is nothing but right. school street is nothing but and high school parking will be gone. Yeah. Well, it's also city employees as well. So the city high school people. the teachers are. Well, I'll summarize. Um, so the comment was predominantly from a resident who witnesses many of the teachers and employees parking on the street. Which street are you on? School Street. Okay. Oh. So I think, I mean, this is part of some of the discussion that happens in the parking study, or the parking, Central Hill parking meetings that they meet regularly, they can discuss these um, issues because during construction, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on that is not ultimately the final condition, um, and these transportation manage, demand management plans are looking at um, ways that and strategies to uh, quickly be able to implement um, alternative transportation strategies to deal with these situations. Is that accurate? Yeah, I do. Okay. Just, just before we change the subject, I just so everyone knows, the vote to fund this thing, which doesn't, strictly speaking, have anything to do with parking, these guys almost lost the vote over the parking issue. I am a reasonable, I, I'm a, I keep a cool head, but there are, people are pissed off about this. And this is a calm room, it's often not a calm room. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you all, as you, you know this already, the 1895 building, if we bring all the additional city well, workers yeah, there, I would say don't even try to get funding for that if there's not some right. solution around it. It could be convincing us that it's possible, but something. I can only control the other city councilors so well, much. They're wild animals. <laughs> <laughs> the parking garage was there before, and it just wasn't able to be funded. So it was expensive. Well, would, would this be something that would So I just want to address a couple of your questions yeah, yeah. about contractors parking in the area. The parking department has someone here like pretty much all day. Um, it's very hard for them to know, especially particularly if contractors live in Somerville. They don't know that they're contractors and also the the whole frontage along Highland Ave is two hour parking, which means anyone in the world can park there for two hours. Um, they're, supposed, they're supposed to be parking off site. There is an agreement that says they have to park off site. So um, the best way, if people see issues like that, or if they see people parking too close to fire hydrants or blocking driveways, is to use the Somerville 311 app, somerillema.gov slash 311. That is the best way for your message to go directly to the person that enforces the parking. Um, and then, uh, 
just some couple more more longer term things having to do with parking that aren't you know immediate as in they won't be solved by the time this project comes online but they will help manage the parking demand our uh, citywide parking study that's going on right now so that involves two things the first thing is going out and surveying every street to see what the regulations are because today you know we have no idea without going out and checking what's two hour what's resident uh, where can you park when you can so basically creating a map and then the second phase of that study is figuring out how to better manage the parking demand um, and maybe that means creating more sort of short-term uses so that people can come and visit the high school for a couple hours um, most of the area is either two hour except by resident which means that if you are a resident people you can park there all day so there are a lot of vehicles in the area that stay there for long periods of time. Um, so one of the goals of the parking site is to figure out how to encourage more short-term uses, more turnover, because anytime you have more turnover, more people are gonna be able to access the site um, with the same number of spaces. That's it. Yes, you had another question. already uh, torn down the right the addition that was on the right hand side and in this picture it shows the addition that's on the left hand side is that being torn down as part of the high school project yes. or is that a different phase yeah so what I understand is the shell of the 1895 building in this orientation will be is part of the high school project, but nothing inside. Right. That that will be part of the next phase um, that the no, city. To the okay. Um. I'm Ben Elgard, by the way. I live on School Street. Um, so the other questions I had are about the war monuments. Um, no one's talked about them, guys. Don't we love our veterans? Um, so I have some questions about those. Um, I saw the artist rendering, and I think they weren't complete. But I did have a question about, it looked like they were stone monuments embedded in concrete. The materiality looked a bit one note. Hopefully, that's not how they will exist in reality. but. I mean, they were very pretty renderings of a very blah <laughs> thing. Um, so it's good if that's not how they're going to end up. Yeah, so each of the uh, memorial spaces will have uh, permeable paving. Um, at the so the Korean War Memorial will be recreating the wall underneath the cap, which is actually part of the cap has names and um, some bronze objects on it. So we'll be recreating that. And then um, also reincorporating the stone boundary wall, if, uh, if you're familiar with it. So we'll be reincorporating that into the center of the space. Um, it will have some granite edging uh, around the front corners and a granite bench for uh, some seating. The Vietnam War Memorial, uh, the Uh, so the monument itself is granite, and the benches that will be coming back are granite as well. Again, it'll have permeable paving with some granite edging around the perimeter of the space to um, you know, hold the pavers and define the space a bit. Um, so the w memorial walk itself will be a concrete walkway, but off of the spaces will have a higher level of uh, materiality. Yes, and there will be plantings around to soften them. I think you mentioned this, maybe I'm repeating it. Um, so the Vietnam Memorial, also there's like a little center circle of cobble paving, which I guess the original installation of the Vietnam Memorial in Union Square had cobbles, and the veterans that we've um, spoken with really wanted to try to have some of that back. So we're putting like a small circle of that around the memorial, directly around the memorial, and then the rest of the paver will be the permeable pavers that is accessible um, instead of like a 
um, uneven cobble so we can make sure that everyone can fully access um, all sides of the Vietnam Memorial. Maybe the parking diagram shows sort of the where the honor roll is, or if you have existing conditions. Yeah, I was just wondering that. Because some of the names of the honor roll are going to go to the gold star area. Some. So my question is, where's the rest of it? So the question about the rest of it, um, the <laughs> Veterans Commission office um, Will the intent is that it's going to be relocated into the 1895 building, and inside. Then the current honor roll will stay there until the 1895 and city hall projects are mapped out um, and constructed. So um, the once the high school is done, sort of the half parking. Um, condition this the scenario will be in place until the um, construction funding for 1895 and City Hall are approved um, so the honor roll will stay in place until there is a plan for 1895 construction Uh, so we're not removing any names from the existing oh, honor roll. Okay. Yes. So it's just the the gold star noted names from the honor roll. Those will be permanently engraved in the gold star memorial wall. Um, and then the intent is that with um, the future 1895 renovation, where the Veterans Commission will have an office there. They really would like to have a digital, like the full honor roll in a digital form um, because they constantly come across uh, new names and new papers and they would like to be able to just add that to the database as well as having the wall be um, a resource so people can come to their office and look up a family member or they can use the information to spotlight specific veterans um, or honor, you know, different divisions at different times. So, well, we will figure out a price with our OPM and our design team, and it will be in the funding request when we go to city council. So in the future form, when the honor roll goes away with the 1895 and city hall renovation, um, the, so the, the concourse, the city hall concourse is actually the exit drive is moving over so that it's in alignment with um, Prescott. So the street, the future drive will be here, just to the east. So this is sort of where the existing honor roll is, if you look at the full build out. But that will be the future um, the, um, the bust for Del Boy and Civil War. So it's the Civil War. Oh, that's right, because the Del Boy is the other entrance. Um, I also noticed that the placards on the memorials have have. Uh, uh, the ability to get a translation. Is it standard to have that be in English? I, there's a bit of 
it's a teeny bit confusing to request a translation in a different language from English. Shouldn't we say in Spanish, do you need a translation or something? Is it there? Oh, wonderful. That makes lots of sense. I couldn't read it. Um, that makes sense. And then I know that um, the way that the uh, that when you talk about the designs, you're talking about the intentions behind the designs. Um, and we know that people rarely follow our desires. So the use, use might look a bit different and uh, we'll have parkour spaces. That's pretty cool. Um, but I also can imagine that the Gold Star Plaza with its edges, it, it right, being right in front of a, an auditorium or a performance space, I can imagine coming out of and you get your gun and like being all riled up. Um, is the is the veterans commission are they prepared for people to for students or I don't know anyone visiting to have fun in those spaces? Because it does seem to be very serious, but it's in a very prominent place that everyone's going to be circulating in. I think one of the positive. Uh, features of the, the proposed Gold Star Plaza is uh, that it is a space that can function as an outdoor auditorium space for any number of events. Um, I think, you know, there are different types of flag raisings around um, with the city and protests, all sorts of things. I think there, this can accommodate lots of different user groups. Um, and uh, we did uh, ask some questions about the security cameras with the high school project, and there will be security cameras as part of the high school project, so there, if there are future potential vandalism, something like that, I, it, we, we have, we'll have security cameras. <laughs> I think the there will be some further discussion when we refine the concept to a more detail level as to what might happen specifically at City Hall, but with the central location of the Gold Star Plaza, I think it can function um, for both library events and City Hall events and high school events, uh, that it's uh, a great formal space uh, that can be used in a number of ways. Um, looking at the time, it is a little after eight. Um, does anyone else have any further questions? I'm going to go to Brandon. Hi. Um, I'll be trying to be brief because I know it is past the time. So I was trying to wait until um, the end to see if everybody brought it up. And thank you for bringing up about the monuments because that was going to be one of my questions. Um, I'm, I'm a little curious about the monuments and how those are going to be set forth. And I think you just gave some explanation there. They're chronological ultimately when it's possible to do that and the honor roll has got its rightful place and such. Um, is there some kind of thought given to how they're integrated together? Like I know that you talked about a walk, but it's not clear to me how that's going to work. Is there any kind of creative thought about how to link them together and make it a little bit more interpretive? For example, um, there's different ways to do that, and and, and um, we've done that before. There's objects, for example, in the Nathan Tufts Park, where we actually placed objects around the site so that people could find out, look at them, and say, "Oh, what are those for?" And those are representing different periods of that park, for example. And it'd be fun if we could do something here to make it more of a learning experience um, for people. Um, I don't know if this is too late in the game to do that, but it sounds like you're now getting down to the point of finalizing some things. So just to throw that out as an idea, you don't have to respond now. Okay. Oh. So the SMMA team, they do have some wonderful ideas about an overall, um, when the full walk is completed. Um, and as part of phase one, we determined that we would rather wait when there's more memorials um, reinstalled, that then we can fully um, engage that entire memorial walk concept. So I think this is, it's 
um, actively been talked about, um, but it was just something that didn't seem quite appropriate to install right now when we have a long way to go before the remaining monuments are reinstalled. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, because it does seem like there's a lot of things still in motion. I think it's great that you're thinking about doing um, the digital piece or the part that allows it to get the translations and to have the QR code so it gives more information than you can put on a plaque, which typically people don't often get enough information from, so I applaud that. There are a lot of great features in here, and I, I really do want to applaud some of the things you've done about making the, all the monuments accessible. I do wonder a little bit about the surface that's going to be around the monuments, because if people are in wheelchairs and such, they really can't go on surfaces that, like the cobblestone, I think you mentioned and such before, so I'm sure they brought that to your attention and, and so they'll be. Yeah, we're, we're keeping the cobblestone very close to the monument as uh, a nod to its previous installation, you know, down at Union Square. So we wanted to recall the material, but um, the rest of the plaza will be permeable papers that will be accessible. So yeah, I'll be. Okay, yeah, because like those are the people that particularly are more likely to be disabled. Course, so. yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's great about the parkour, and that's for both teens and adults. <laughs> um, and I'm glad to hear that that got incorporated in there. And any kinds of things that relates to active use of the site, even though it's not really, I mean, the playground's great for the kids, but I think, needs to say, this is a high school and a lot of teens congregate there, and that's where um, will be continue, and especially when it would be nice space. And so I'm wondering if there's any thought given to trails, like because of the, to take advantage of the opportunity presented by the different levels and, and slopage for running type trail or such to make it something that people could use as a workout, for example, if, if that's been given any thought, um, because there are all those different levels there and on a positive side. Um, I also wondered about the, um, the Garden Club, I thought that's great that you've incorporated space for them because they do a wonderful job and, and wondering if there's opportunity for the students at the high school to have some space there that they can use as part of their um, extended science education or plantings and things like that because I think that's something we want to encourage um, and also even with the playground there for the kids, it'd be nice to have a place where they can actually do some plantings, bulbs and things. Um, Louisa has a great program that people do public plantings, but to leave something space for that. Um, and the other thing about the signage of the different types, I think that's great the way you've done it. Again, that would fit into the interpretive piece for the historic, so to think about how that would be done. Um, and then dog walkers. There's no mention about dog walkers, but this whole area is used by them for all kinds of things. So is there some provision for them to be able to clean up after themselves and to use this space <laughs> as they will anyway um, in a positive way? And um, the last thing I'll just say is the big concern I have is about the parking. I think this is a huge oversight on the city's part. I won't belabor the point because I know you guys have no responsibility or no ability to do with this, but I just want it publicly known that I think it's great that we're doing all these things on the building and going to increase the number of people that come up here, but without accommodating them with some parking for the events at night and other times that they just cannot walk there or bike there or such. Um, with the transit schedule being what it is, um, as a city hall employee, I can tell you the buses don't run very frequently at night at all. So it's it's not a very accessible site, even though it is in the center of the city and better than others. So parking is, is really at a premium. And um, the parking right now is really difficult. And with more usage of the building, it's going to become even more impossible. So I just think that's a challenge we need to deal with. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So since it's after eight, how about I bring this meeting to a close? Uh, thank you all very much for coming tonight and participating and sharing your thoughts. Um, you know, this is how projects, you know, become Somerville projects with your input. Um, we will be around if you guys have any additional questions. Um, that you would like to talk to us uh, after. So thank you all very much.